If you would, please just stand for a moment of prayer. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you'll be with this country as we go through these election cycles. Be with the candidates that are out there, Lord, and, and please, Lord, give us the ability to try to cipher through the, the rhetoric that we are all having to deal with here for the last, uh, last year. Uh, Lord, we hope and pray that you guide us, guide the citizens of this great, great nation of ours, and guide us direct us here in this little county as we humbly pray in your heavenly sweet name. Amen. Amen. And while we're standing, we'll be the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Thank you. Oh. All right, Mr. Dever, do we have... Uh, we do have an amendment to the agenda uh, under action items appointed to the Pickens County Planning Commission item C uh, down under uh, uh, the appointment of Mr. Lee Thrasher. Uh, that is the only change we have right here. I need a movement second that we might amend the, uh, the agenda tonight to, uh, to show that. So moved. Second. Can I do you do it on, on the same motion? Or? Let me also okay. Let me get, let me take care of this one here. Uh, any further discussion on that one? None being everybody. Everybody in favor of another saying aye. Aye. Thank you. And we got one more. Uh, my fault. We got one more. Uh, we the attorney needs to talk about a, a tax item under new business. A, a tax deed. A tax deed under new business. So we need a move in a second to. Uh, to have that correction on the agenda also. So moved. Second. I'm moving second for discussion. None being all the people that know the saying aye. Aye. None opposed, thank you. All right, that brings us down to item number four on the approval, on the approval of the agenda. I have a move and second to approve the agenda now with the corrections. So moved. Second. I have a move and a second, any further discussion? None being all the people that know the saying aye. Aye. None opposed, thank you, that has been done. Now at this time under item 5, uh, Miss Becky Denny always handles the employee recognition and we have one tonight and I'm going to turn it over to her. Thank you, appreciate it. And this is uh, my favorite part of the evening to honor our longtime employees and we have a good one tonight. <laughs> Mr. Roger Malkey has been with um, the Road Department of Public Works for 10 years. Thank so you. congratulations. Thank you. Six hundred finance report. At this time, I'm going to turn that over to uh, to our CFO, Ms. Faye Harvey. Boy, can you kill one of the lights, please? There you go. Did you light the candle? I'm trying. There you go. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe that'll be back in just a second. Um, the um, the finance report that we that y'all have tonight is for uh, the period in September 30th, 2016, and that is um, nine months or 75 percent of our year. The um, so the expenditure should be 75 percent or less. Yeah, I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
It's not bright. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe it'll improve as we go along. The, um, our total um, revenue to date is uh, $9,566,836, and that is 40.16% of the uh, budgeted revenue. So now we'll go to the expenditures. And under general government, the total expenditures are 2, $2,393,058, and that's 75.85%. Under the judicial function, expenditures are 2378574 that's 70.12%. Under public safety, the expenditures are $8,994,010, and that's 74%. Under the um, public works function, the expenditures through the end of September are $1,771,479, and that's 63.33%. Um, under the health, uh, health department, the senior center, and the MATS program, the expenditures are $494,009, which is 62.51%. Culture and recreation, is um, 687807 and that's 74.04 percent. Housing and development expenditures are $416,897, which is 68.65 percent. So the total uh, general fund expenditures uh, through the end of September is $17,135,834. And that is 71.92 percent, and that's uh, slightly over three percent under uh, where the budget should be. The um, the enterprise funds, the water department, uh, the expenditures so far are one million two hundred eighty-five thousand four hundred fourteen dollars, sixty-two point one eight percent. For the airport, expenditures are two hundred twenty-four thousand seven hundred forty-four dollars. And that's 59.85 percent. Um, the, the line item budget reports were sent to the department heads and elected officials on October 14th. And um, I have copies of all those if you'd like to review those. And that's, that's all I have. Any questions? You don't have other questions to that? Well, the only thing I have is the board and part of the you know, put on there. General government? Yeah. Yeah. It, that that um, that budget is going to have to have a budget amendment because of all the improvements that are the renovations that we yeah, did to the across the street to lease yeah. it out. Um, I was hoping we'd get the lease done and get some revenue in to come Well we signed to give you all a heads up, uh, uh, you know, last meeting you give me the authority to go ahead and sign the lease whenever it was ready to go. We have signed that lease as of three weeks ago. Okay. So the lease is signed, the county has signed the lease not only for this building here but for the two offices at the, at the basement of the courthouse. And uh, we'll be receiving, you remember the figure that we're going to be receiving on that once they get their part of that figured out? Um, the, the one at the courthouse is, um, Slightly under four hundred dollars a month. The one over here is um, eight thousand, so over eight thousand a month. So it's almost a hundred thousand a year. The defects will be moving here, and the two offices in the basement were the uh, state, state, uh, state probation. State probation yes. That's correct. But that money, Jerry, to your point, that money will go back to pay for that. All right. Any further? Any further questions on that? All right, it, um, we're going to go to item number seven of the consent agenda. We signed a Domestic Violence Awareness Month proclamation, and I'm going to go ahead and read it right here. Whereas the domestic violence does not discriminate, it happens everywhere and can happen to anyone. Domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, income levels, genders, religious backgrounds, and whereas Georgia ranks 17th in the nation for the rate of which women are killed by men and 135 individuals lost their lives in domestic violence in Georgia during the 2015. And whereas 46 state certified domestic violence programs provide shelter for 5,998 survivors and their children in 2015. And our local <coughs> shelter provided a safe haven for 84 women and children for the same time period. 
And whereas domestic violence is a leading cause of injury to women, more than car accidents, muggings, rapes combined, and whereas the crime of domestic violence violates an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity through the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control or abuse, and whereas the impact of domestic violence is wide-ranging, wide directly affecting individuals and society, and society as a whole here in this community throughout the United States and the world, and whereas the purpose of Domestic Violence Awareness Month is to promote and support ongoing public education efforts and eradicate domestic violence. Therefore, I do by proclaim the month of October to be National Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Pickens County and urge all citizens to observe this month by becoming aware of the reality and tragedy of domestic violence and by participating in the community efforts and supporting community members working towards its end. Signed the 7th day of October, 2016, Robert P. Jones, Chairman of the Pickens County Board of Commissioners. So that has been on a considered agenda. That brings us down to item number eight under old business. Ms. Deborah, do we have any old business? No, sir. We do not have any old business. That brings us down uh, to new business. Uh, we have got a, a um, item here that was sent to us through Mr. Greg Trammell. Um, it is a volunteer cemetery preservation commission, cemetery commission main draft. It's in PDF form. I think uh, Mr. Barnes and Ms. Denny have got a copy of this. And he has prepared this in review of some of the old cemeteries we have in the county. Um, my recommendation would be, and, and y'all, you know, y'all can, can speak up if you want to, is is less at this particular time don't have any action on this but give us time to kind of read through it and maybe our county county uh, attorney can uh, can go through it and give us time uh, to look through it also to be sure um, where he got his information what he's asking the county to do or not do in regard to uh, keeping cemeteries uh, to where you can see them keep them clean what is y'all's opinion to that I agree with you because with the budget meetings, I honestly didn't get this read mm -hmm. thoroughly. So that sounds good to me. Yeah, cemetery and historical preservation under abandoned cemeteries and the purpose in Kent. Mr. Tremler's done a good job putting this together, but I think we need to be sure we take time to go through it. So, I guess that being said, I'm going to make a move that we um, we table this and give us time to review it, and uh, maybe we can bring it up to the next uh, next county meeting. So, I've got to move on the floor. Do I get a second? Second. I'm moving a second. Any further discussion? None being all in favor of nobody saying aye. Aye. None opposed. Thank you. All right. That takes care of new business. All right. That brings us down to item 10 under action items. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, that you did. I didn't put it on my notes here. You want to talk about the uh, that tax item you want to talk about? I didn't think, my apologies to the board. I, I didn't write, I didn't advise y'all this before the meeting. I'm sorry to spring it on you. Um, but we were doing, my office was doing a title search for a lady named Rebecca um, Hill up on Jones Mountain. Um, and it, when we did the title search, it was showing that it had been sold for back taxes and was vested in a neighbor to the north. And when we, look in the, when we looked at the tax commissioner's file, what was advertised and what was auctioned off and what was bid on was only the parcel to the north, and this parcel never should have been included in the legal description. And that, that was an error on, on the um, tax commissioner's office. However, that is, um, I've, I've gotten a, a um, I've, I've talked to the fellow that owns the, that bought the North Parcel of the tax so he's going to, he's going to um, issue a sign quick claim deed. But I also need one out of the county to, to fix the title of it. And so what I'd ask is, is a, um, just a, a motion in action to allow Robert to sign that, that deed um, tomorrow or, or um, at some, uh, some later time when we get back to to correct that so that this woman does actually own, own the property. But, but in doing that, I'm telling you that 
the property that Ms. Milhelm has never advertised. She's always, she has paid her taxes, and it was, it was an error to include it on the legal description. I'll be having any other questions in regard to that. Any other things come up from anybody, any other citizen in regard to that? Other than the no, that's not this. Thing. All the time sources on this, all the time I've ever seen this happen. And, and, and the sheriff's office doesn't actually prepare those deeds. That's, that is, those are prepared by a service um, that also, the same service that conducts the tax service. So it's, um, it's just an error that's happened. And now that they're trying to do something with land and we've searched it, it's going to work. So the, so you need, you need to move to the fact that giving me the authority to authorize me to, to sign the correct the, the correct deed. So moved. Second. Having a move and a second. Any further discussion on that? Any questions over that? None. None being all that favor. No, but saying aye. Aye. No opposed. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. That's going to bring us down to item number ten on the approved minutes. Uh, need the. Uh, uh, Moving a second to approve the regular board meeting that we had on September 15th of 2016. Those minutes, of course, are, are, on, are here and then they'll be put on the web. Uh, did not see any any changes or deletions in my copies. I hope you all didn't either. So, uh, need to move a second to go ahead and approve those minutes. So moved. Second. And moving a second for discussion. Not being all that in favor of that number saying aye. 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 No opposed. Thank you. All right, same thing on uh, October the 6th of 2016. We had a work session and have the meeting minutes to that also. I've read through them. Uh, did not see anything uh, out, of, out of order on those particular ones, and I'm, I'm assuming y'all did too. That being said, I need to move a second to approve those those uh, minutes for that work session. So move a second. I'm going to move a second to approve that. Uh, on, uh, any further discussion? None being. All that in favor of the notice saying aye. Uh, no opposed, thank you. All right. All right, that brings us down to a rezone request under parcel number RZ-08-161210, uh, William Edward Simmons. Uh, let's see here. In regard to uh, request for change in land use classification, Mexican County Planning and Development Office received a completed application on August 8, 2016 from, from William Edward Simons. Uh, Simmons, I'm sorry, requesting a change in the land use clarification of highway business to suburban residential. Uh, on 5.17 acres located at 2514 Highway 515 South, Jasper, Georgia. The intended purpose of this rezoning request, if approved, would be to enable Mr. Simons, Simmons sorry, to obtain uh, VA financing and to allow his two sisters and elderly mother to each have a resident along with himself on the property so they will be in, a, in close proximity to take care of their mother. A public hearing was held on the 10th of October 2016 regarding this application in the Pickens County Commissioner's meeting room before the Pickens County Planning Commission after reviewing the application receiving the staff report to be approved and listening to the testimony from both the applicant and one opponent the Pickens County Planning Commission voted 6 yes, 0 no to approve the rezone request on 5.17 acres parcel contained on tax map parcel 053B-019. Uh, the Pickens County Planning Commission now forwards this request to the Board of Commissioners for review and decision. Um, I received this, and the first thing I did is pull the pulled a few things out uh, to see exactly uh, where this was at, and it's right below Rocco's. Um, it is property that was originally owned by the Prather family, I believe, and it's right adjacent to 515. It is. And you want to go from commercial to... Uh, Commercial to, to rural residential. Yes. Or I'm sorry, highway business to suburban. to suburban residential. Um, the compre comprehensive plan that we have here dedicates that that whole corridor up through there as a commercial entity. Um, 
Have y'all had time to, to review that? I, yeah. I've read it over. Uh, how far is it from Rocco's? Like it's 1,200 feet. Back okay, so it's below? Back. Oh. But really, though, there's no more need testimony at this level. Your, okay. The board considerations of this thing is that I don't know the record. I believe the business is in, in the record already. Okay. So I don't think that's Can I ask, can we discuss it? Three, y'all talk about it. Is it on the same side of the road as Rocco's? I'm it's just trying to get When I reviewed it, it's on the same side of the road as Rocco's. Is this Ryan Crown Brazier property? Pardon? Ryan Brazier property. Oh. It's Terry, Terry's daddy, Terry and Gary and all his father's property. Well, Ryan lives there. Yeah. He's on the, he's a little further south. Is he? He's not on the property. He's on the, the uh, what I, what I reviewed uh, today was the fact that there is a residence already on the property. So it, it's already grandfathered into that fact they can stay there. Uh, there's nothing, you know, nobody can do to that, to that point because that property is already, already commercial and then the house alone can stay there. The question is, is the fact that if it, if you change to how, to that particular parcel to highway business, then you have the ability to build uh, residence on that in below Rocco's along one quarter of 515. I don't, you know, that would be something that, I really hadn't had time to exempt because with the zoning commission coming in, I, you know. And in the comprehensive plan, it states that that's for commercial use, is that If you hadn't had time to read the comprehensive plan, it'd be, yeah. you might want, to, might want to review it. I just can't remember what that yeah. hmm. I've got some notes here. I, I believe it's right to send the doctor in the inline development so I can assist her. What the comprehensive plan does and makes that for the four primary commercial. Mm -hmm. Dwelling on it now, um, that is grandfathered in when this one zoning along went in place back in 05. Uh, I think the dwelling was already there pre pre to that. So the dwelling dwelling's grandfathered in. But the the what the individual is, is wanting to ask for is changing it from, from highway business back to rural residential. And uh, we have the ability to, you know, we can we can do a couple of two or three things here. We can you can prove it, you can deny it, or we can postpone it and review it to the next county meeting. I think that will be the best route to go um, because we don't yeah. know the history or put on any other thing. Now, what you're saying, just postpone it to the next county yeah. meeting? Pardon? Take what table have you got? You've got a timeline. I'm not familiar with that. Richard, you know what the timeline? Yes, sir. Once the Planning Commission passes on their recommendation to the Board of Commissioners, the Board of Commissioners has up to 90 days to make a decision. So if you vote to table it uh, and bring it back up at the next meeting, you'd be within that time frame. So 90 days from October the 10th, correct? And to be honest with them, we, we've been dealing with budget hearings for the last week and a half, so you know we haven't had time to, to look at some of this when we just finished up the budget hearings yesterday. Second, any further discussion? None being all in favor of that number saying aye. Aye. None opposed, thank you. We are going to table that item to the next meeting. All right. And that brings us down to 
I'm doing the text amendment changes to chapter 7 for Court of Ordinances, Utilities, Revisions, and Modifications. Richard, can you give us a brief overview of that? Thank you, Mr. Jones. I've met with Water Department representatives and also um, County Attorney was present in which we discussed the fact that Chapter 74 for utilities related to water uh, in terms of the current policies and some of the current legal standards there would not be significant changes but that minor changes throughout the chapter needed to occur therefore rather than nitpicking little of this little of that uh, which would, would be a little sloppier in resolution form um, the recommendation of staff and the planning commission is to readopt chapter 74 utilities um, again nothing significant in terms of changes uh, just bringing it up to current policy and legal standards so more or less you did about the same thing we did on that other one here last month just kind of cleaned it up a little bit y'all have any questions on that all right need a moving a second to approve that text amendment Second. I'll move a second. Any further discussions? None being all favor of the saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, thank you. That has been approved. That brings us down to item C uh, an appointment of Mr. Lee Thrasher to the Pickens County Planning Commission. Uh, we had lost a, a, a member by reason uh, we, we've hired her <laughs> to the, uh, to the uh, planning, planning zone. Uh, department we have back there and Miss Casey cannot serve on the board and be an employee of the county so she has taken that uh, she works uh, she's under Richard and takes uh, has taken that responsibility now we have an open open slot in the Pickens County Planning Commission so uh, I have talked to Mr. Lee Thrasher uh, he represents the same area that Linda was representing for keeping people in, in certain areas on that so I'm um, uh, need a move and a second to approve or, or disapprove whatever y'all's uh, feeling is or, or would you like me to look at somebody else? Uh, does he live in Ventry? He does. What is his background that would tie in with planning and development? He was a, I don't think I <coughs> background was, to be honest with you. He's, he is, uh, he's retired. He was in, was in planning, I think, in Cobb County originally. So he does have some background? He does have, he does have a little background to that. And he was amenable. He was amenable to uh, to taking on that, even though he is he is retired. Mm -hmm. Do we need to do this uh, timely? I mean, is it? It can be. It can be tabled also uh, to the next meeting if you. We also desire, pardon? Yeah, it, it can be tabled also if, if y'all want to check them out further. I'm ready, I'm ready. I'd like to meet Okay, all right. That's not a problem. He won't, uh, he'd probably let that meet y'all. I know we've been busy. We was going to try to get together uh, this last week with everything going on, but uh, it's been kind of difficult with the budget hearings and all. But anyway, that, that won't be a problem. So I'll, I'll make the move to, to table that appointment until we have time to. Uh, for you often to meet the same business. So we have a move to table it. May I get a second? Sure. I move in a second. Any further discussion? None being all that fair with the saying aye. Yeah. None opposed, thank you. All right. That brings us down to item number 11 under guest and comments. Anyone have any comments? I've got one that I'm going to make. And I'm going to get, I'm going to ask permission from my other two commissioners here. Uh, discussion over the over the senior tax exemption has been been heated, to say the least. Um, if this thing is is to move forward, the question I have is the fact that I would like to know exactly, or somewhere close on what the expenses are going to be or the cost would be. Uh, for the taxpayers in regard to the middle grade of the school system if, if a senior tax exemption was to go in place, if they could give us some sort of clarification on the numbers. 
got anything to comment on that, Phil? And, and that being said, I would, I would ask that our county attorney to put a letter together to that effect and address it to the school board to see primarily what that cost would be. I mean, we're just, nobody, everybody's asked the question, everybody's shooting in the dark. You know, which plan are we going to use? How much is it going to cost to do it? Right now, the school system's at a little over 16 mils, if I'm correct, Roy, and, uh, and, and they can't go up but 20. But, 20 is a cap. But do the commissioners really have a say in that? I was understanding it was a school board and a, a legislative thing. Uh, I think the way the law is, it's the governing authority, which I think would be the only one. But Rick, I believe, is seeking clarification on that. But, uh, uh, however, it, it is a decision that directly impacts the school board because they're going to have to raise their budget. Their, their military. Their budget is very different than yours. And that many of their calls are fixed. They can't just cut in, in various places in the manner that you and the other constant cultures on this side of the country. And so I think what Robert is saying is that they need to be there needs to be a discussion among the two boards as to what kind of impact is this going to have and, and how do we define the quantify that impact. If we if we do have involvement, then you're right to to get that report together. I think I'm just I'm just asking for some clarification. I mean, it's so so. With this letter, is it more of an invitation for a meeting with either a committee of the board or the board as a whole, or however they determine to do it, to where y'all the, the the two entities could have a discussion as to what what the plan needs to be or what what. Well, not not only I'm I'm trying to you know. Yeah, what the plan needs to be, but but how much? Somebody needs to put a figure on it because because the public out here that's going to wind up having to eat that cost needs to know exactly what is how it's going to hit them in the pocketbook. And I don't know how you're going. I'm I'm trying to wrap my head around how you come come to that. See, well, see it's, it's simple. I mean, it's a math equation. A plus right. B is X. Yeah. X is their budget. X does not change because their budget is fixed with all the salaries that under the teaching staff. A is the millage rate, B is what you apply the millage rate to at the value of the digest. If you decrease the value of the digest, you must increase the millage rate. I mean, that, that's simple math because X doesn't change in that way. And so, is it fair for this board to make a decision that forces the school board to raise their millage rate without their input? And, and uh, I think that's what Robert said. Yeah, that's that what I'm trying to, yeah, that's what I'm getting at. There needs to be a, a dialogue between, a productive dialogue between the two of you to resolve the issue. If they don't want to meet, then, then so be it. But at least we're trying to, to come up with some sort of resolution or, or just forget it. I mean, you know, we're, we're trying to, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think that is an issue that's on the table. Is it? Y'all, there's been discussion about raising the, the limit from 25000 to another figure that's been talked about a, a complete exemption. I think that's what the way it's advocating that the school board did anyway. And um, I mean, there's also the elimination of that. One of the very good points that was made at the school board meeting was the issue of the five minute share. The first, even though their military rate is around 17 mills, Less than 12 of that is used in Pickens County school systems because the fund is around six million this year. It goes to this the state media we be re reallocated among other districts. And that's we're in that top tier category because of the median income that we have. The problem, the unfairness is that was pointed out by one of the board members, is that some of these counties that are receiving our six million dollars of our tax money. Are granting the senior exemption, <coughs> and it's not fair that they should receive it. Now that's that's apples and oranges. That's not really the debate because we don't have control over that. But it's you know it's it's a consideration. Well, so the direction is, let me understand my direction is to draft a letter to the board of education to invite them to to, to begin a dialogue. In form of the meeting between the two bodies. Y'all have a problem with that? No. Is that what? Yeah. And if they if they want to have a meeting, that's fine. If they don't, it's on it's on the table. 
but, but no matter what we do, if if we go ahead and do one, then they're on the hook to raise the middle of So, you see, I read the law a little different, and, and I've had other ones tell me, you know, if, if the way the law reads is governing authority has the right to raise the middle rate and assess taxes. Well, okay, if we have, if we have the right to raise the middle rate and assess taxes, then I want the, the ability to, if, if, to handle the middle grade of the school system. I mean, you know, what's, what's fair, what's good for one is good for the other. I know Faye don't want to have to hear that, but <laughs> it just... It doesn't make sense, because we know that they're not doing it. It's, it's disrespectful to the school board to make a decision that's going to have a major event. It's going to cause them bad publicity or whatever else. I think that y'all get this a sign of respect on the board of commissioners side to ask them to participate in that body. And Rick's role would just be to get it on the ballot. Am I right? Or would he, he have been he, he, he would introduce local, yes. His role would be to introduce local legislation to, to have it on the ballot. Okay. And I haven't, Rick and I've talked about this, I haven't asked him this question directly. My assumption would be that he would want a resolution from both boards with, uh, with other legislators that I've worked with. They, they would want resolutions from both boards of the city and the county, whichever governments they would be able to vote. Uh, but I, I don't have to put words into Rick's mouth. I'm not saying that's what he would want. But uh, I just think it's, we're, we're all better off if the two boards can get along. Yeah. Do I hear Association County Commissioner, some way that I in line of school. What did you say? Every, every somebody from the association. Yeah. ACCG, Dr. Well, Dr. ACCG. You know my word was head of that. Right. And when I was at the last meeting at Big Canoe, we had this who's the governing authority. So I said, Mike, you've given this t uh, tax exemption and worked with it. Is it the Board of Education or the Board of Commissioners? And he quickly said, neither. And I said, what do you mean? He said, it is your state representative and and state senator. That's who did ours. They put it on the ballot, yeah, and, uh, they, and that we didn't discuss it past that. But you know, he was head of ACCG, so you might want to. But, but that's the process. They they would introduce local legislation that would put it on the ballot, and, and it's really their terms as to what they would require before they would do it. And I think, like I said, with other members of the. And y'all can have regular conversation too, but I, I think that it probably needs to be between the two of y'all to start with because you need, you know, what, what is the, if, if it's a blanket senior tax exemption, what impact does that going to have? Or right. how, how much of the digest are you giving out of the tax exemption? Can we, can we ask, could we ask in the letter what the school system would feel comfortable? Well, I, to that point or I, I can I can advise them of that. I mean, we can just the letter would just be to set up a meeting. Let's just have it, and then we can have you know in, in preparation for the meeting, we can have talking points or something that we can get prepared for. And I think getting those numbers together would be very helpful. That it, you're talking. Those, and it's, it's great for me to describe them in that way, but I don't know how easy it's going to be to make that determination because in, in Lloyd's office, he's not he's not going to have the ages of every homeowner. Mm -hmm. No. In, on, on the See, that's what's so difficult about that is yeah. you don't know yeah. the amount of exemption. Yeah. You don't know what's going to take off. When you can look, at what, look at Gilbert County. They did it, and it was a financial disaster for their school system, and, and we don't need to do that to our school system. Because we're not in charge of the school system, but that is one of the bigger economic engines that we have here. If you have a bad school system, everything else is bad. That's one comment Mr. Burke made. He said, you need to be cautious if, you know, if most of your tax base is from property taxes. Yes. It can really hurt you. Yeah. So. If, if, if we're, unlike Dawson County, we do not have a million dollars a month coming in and sales tax. Right. We don't have a 400 portable with that type of commercial activity. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's you know, look, when this came up several years ago, when we were in the old building, Lloyd did a very good job of showing comparisons of counties that gave the tax exemption, you know, apply our you know, same value to house and still paying plus taxes here. 
don't know if it's something they still hold true or not, but um, but there are equities and, and considerations on both sides of the issue to look at. Okay. But, but I, I'll, I'll draft the letter and write them for for about a minute. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do we have any further further comment before we go home for the evening and have supper? I've got one if I could indulge in the for just a little while. We had a um, I notice we were in, we have been involved in a lawsuit involving two very high price tax appeals in Superior Court. And we got a notice today that both of those were amended Smiths. The parties the plaintiffs do have the right to refile them, but it's a, to me it's a positive sign that they were dismissed. And I think a large part of that has to do with how your tax assessor has kept his record and run his office. And I think he should be, he had a lot, he, the way he ran his office had a lot to do with, with the legal ability of getting that dealt with and all that. Good job, Lord. Thank you. Yeah. And to reciprocate, it was only possible because the county stepped up yeah. with yeah. good legal well, representation also. Yeah, the county, the board decided to back you on it. It was a team effort. Any, any other comments? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is 10 minutes after 6. Hope you all have a great weekend. Y'all take care. Thank you for coming.